of everything, truth must surely prevail. With this, I welcome you to God's Love You channel, the home of news. If it is your first time of coming across this wonderful channel and you like what we are doing, kindly subscribe, put on your notification bell to all notifications. This will enable you to know when we upload a new video. Here we react to all forms of videos, local, international, especially what is happening in Nigeria. And we have come again today to react to this. I love this, my brother, so much. News post. If you want to be getting his video, watching more of his video, I would advise you to visit his platform. He always speaks the truth. So in this video, he is trying to explain to us that the media in Nigeria, they are not helping the situation. I want us, I will be here. Let us listen to this and hear, you know, <laughs> well, I don't want to say anything. Let's hear from his mouth. And after this, we'll come to the comment section to air our opinion. Thank you. The Nigerian media has done a lot of harm to Nigerians. I repeat, the Nigerian media has done a lot of harm to Nigerians. They deliberately don't report some incidents. Look at what is happening in the North, killings in the North. The media has deliberately decided not to make it a front page. Or is, is it that those that are dying in the north are not worth reporting? The destructions in the north are not worth reporting during Buhari's regime. It was open. During uh, Jonathan's regime, they all were reporting state. They used it for political reasons. Fayemi said it, that the Ojota crusade, Ojota protest against Jonathan was political. So the media was so active. During that time, they were just reporting every little thing that happened in the North the Boko Haram, even though it was a planned work to remove Jonathan by all the people in power today. Now, it is the turn of President Bola Metunubu, and there are things happening in the North. The media has deliberately decided not to throw their searchlight on the killings and the activities of Boko Haram in the North. And we are meant to take it like that. They want us to take it and say, uh, yes, uh, Tinubu is working and there's, this, there's no insecurity in the north. When you look down very well, you see that the media is powerful. And the tools the media use is to change the narrative. So if the president has captured judiciary, legislature, and other parastatas of government, are you going to tell me that the traditional media has been captured? Okay, look at what Arise TV said about a person on Twitter, no nonsense, he said, a reporter had read by 77 Americans that were involved in all kinds of fraud were reported that they were all egos. Now, one thing the media needs to do, the media needs to clarify which report is misinforming or disinforming. Or are you trying to change the story? The media needs to put it in perspective. So all this propaganda has been going on for a very long time. The traditional media, the mainstream media did not do anything. Look at it. It was just people that had to go fact check that report and saw that it was not all of them that were egos. Some other persons from other nationalities and, all, and a few of them Yorubas were in that list. So the aim of that reportage by the no nonsense on Twitter was to denigrate the Igbo people, but the media had to keep silent on it. The media kept silent, they didn't say anything. Now that becomes our history. When you reach tomorrow now, somebody makes reference, somebody will now come and say, uh, This is this, this is what is it becomes your history. When lies is being told over and over again and repeatedly for years, it becomes history, it becomes the truth. That is what. We are facing as Igbo people today the lies, the misinformation that has been told on us so as to denigrate the Igbo tribe. When you look at By God 3 on social media, you want to ask the question who started By God 3? Now, some of these unfortunate guys will tell you that Igbo started By God 3. They themselves they know that it is all lies. That the By God 3 started from the Yoruba Runu because a P2B decided to run for presidency. 
when you look at Tinubu's, I always refer to this, when you look at Tinubu's campaign and what he said during his campaign, he was busy attacking other candidates. That is the policy of this current regime, to attack other people. He was busy attacking Obi. Obi was busy telling Nigerians what they needed to do, take back your country, what they needed that's what the manifesto they had for Nigerians. That's what Obi was busy telling Nigerians. While Tinubu went on there, look at his campaign. He was busy attacking, 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 attacking. Then somebody, Omase, a, a, in quote, a journalist, came out and wrote a, 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 a publication which he called Obituary. That is prior to the elections, 23 presidential elections. These are things that you can verify. There was nothing like we attacking Tinubu for him. Be, well, nothing like that. Nothing like that. This will literally started everything. Just take, a, take for example, if we were in 1960s and there was a protest and everybody was just, just the, the, the allegation was that P2B, uh, Igbo, IPOB was the ones sponsoring the NBAD governance protest. And there was no social media. There was no reporter. Nobody was going to immediately. You know, what about fake news or misinformation is that you don't allow misinformation stay for long. You hit it back. When it tell lies against you, you debunk it at that moment. When they disinform, you inform that this. You clarify that disinformation. That is what social media has helped us to do. But then, if they have taken that report, when there's no clapback, there's no attack, there's no rebuttal, immediately, it stays for long. It becomes the fact, the truth. And people, professors, PhD holders who are writing books do not reference to that information, which is not true and which is misinformation. If Peter were to write his own publication, if the government of the day is, if the media, the traditional media in 1960 refuses his own publication or tries to censor his own publication, telling Nigerians that he's not sponsoring the protest, who cares? But now on social media, if you bring out any falsehood, they will correct it. Whether it is, whether you are sens whether the traditional media has lost the trust he has on Nigerians and they are trying to gain it, they cannot gain it. Because over the years, they have been disinforming Nigerians and diverting the attention of Nigerians to things that are not relevant. They are not checking the government as supposed. An example also is the answers. The Igbos did this, did that in answers. The shops that were destroyed most, mostly belonged to the Igbos. Properties were destroyed. Individual properties were destroyed, looted. Mostly belongs to the Igbos. And you are supposed to know that Igbo's owned majority of the shops around these areas that God, even Bode Thomas, look at what was looted, belonging to the Igbo's, they lost a lot. Those that got into the palace of the Oba, those that got into the palace of the Oba were mainly Yorubas. The NSAS people that were arrested and still in custody today, when you look at the names, mainly Yorubas, but they were pushing a narrative that it was Igbos. Igbos were applying to Bonda and Lagos. The mainstream media saw what was happening. The mainstream media saw the misinformation. They could not debunk it. They could not, they could not carry out a campaign against it. They decided to keep quiet and do as if nothing happened. Now, Arise TV have come out to clarify that number, 77 people fraud in America, all Igbos, that it was all lies. And look at the reactions. And most of these reactions, you see, it comes from one side, the Southwest, calling Arise TV an IPB station. This is Namde Kanu has a share in Arise TV. Arise TV has gone f f f partisan and what, what have you. Arise TV, Arise TV that, Arise TV that. You see, it is not Nigerians, these people that will tell you how journalism is being run. You have your opinion about journalism. The same way Democracy differs from different countries. The way journalism is supposed to be run is not what we are doing in Nigeria. It's not what our mainstream media 
is doing in Nigeria. They are not holding the government accountable. Instead, the mainstream media are in bed with the government. So is that journalism? Now, this lady came out, Oji Okwe, came out to debunk the lies. And which are lies? Somebody came out and still put out the same list and says, Arise TV is IPOB. It is lies. This, all these guys are not, all of them are not egos. So why coming out to paint that picture? Now, after the election, and all happened, then Trubu was announced winner. There was a campaign against P2B's, P2B and his popularity. His popularity on social media. People were practically, people devoted their time. Because if you have something doing, you will not just devote your whole time every day to be denigrating a P2B. I believe these people were being paid to do so. To what, to what end? Just to make him unpopular. And they decided to use the bigotry, the ethnicity. That's what they started all this. And it is out there for generations unborn to know that they started all this. You cannot rewrite, you cannot misinform us and tell us that Igbo started this and that. Usually, normally, when it comes to banter, you, you, don't, you don't compete with the Yorubas. You don't, you don't go close when it comes to banter, abuse and all, all sorts. Or carrying all sort of propaganda, you don't come close to Yorubas. They are number one. It is in their nature. That's why they effortless, effortlessly do some of these things without even trying to plan how they do. If they carry out the propaganda against you, these Westerners, you, you will be surprised whether it is your mother that gave back to you. That is what people that are called Igbos have been facing. Now the North is complaining that the media has turned a blind eye on what is happening in that region. This is how it is. You know, when attention is not given to a thing, it becomes irrelevant. So no matter how many people it has been, if the media continues reporting, reporting what is happening in the North, it becomes relevant and it becomes a minus to this government. Now the implication, somebody will just come tomorrow and write something on social media and say that the government has tackled insecurity. Did you know what happened yesterday or last two days? Did you know the killings that was unreported? Do you know the killings? Now, the government said they were going to pay 77,000 to NYC coppers. It was, they, they, they blew the trumpet and all have you. They said they were going to pay 77,000. At the end of the day, the last payment was 33,000. You can see the misinformation and lies. Now, the president's broadcast, he said we have attracted almost 30 billion foreign direct investment. 30 billion we have attracted. We have attracted. So, somebody's promising to invest is different from that we have attracted. Let's be clear. Because the way you put it as if we have it, we have foreign direct investment of $30 billion in our country. You see that kind of misinformation. At the end of the day, when we don't see the reality, you now start explaining. Because we are trying to score a point on all these things that is been happening. So the misinformation is deliberate. And Arise TV arose to the occasion to debunk, to put the record straight. And some people are angry and calling it IPOB. What is wrong with IPOB? You call yourself Oduduwa, Arewa. What is wrong with that? What is wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that. That's why the government cannot win a case against Nandi Kanu. They decided to make Nandi Kanu personal non grata by not giving audience, by making sure that the judge steps down, then there won't be any kind of trial. They will, they will waste a lot of time waiting for another judge to take up the case. Well, in fact, that they could not convict this man. They have looked at it holistically. They have seen that they could not convict Nnamdi Kanu. So people just come online and make all sorts of rubbish statements. Now the North is complaining seriously that the killings, the insecurity is underreported. We cannot know all these things if the media does not amplify it. Especially particular media platforms with huge following. Because they are the ones that, that tell us what we think. 
if the newspaper does not carry a particular topic, it, it does not become popular because they have a reach. They have a wide audience. So whatever they tell you is what you think about. If Buhari, if Buhari falls sick today, if the newspaper, the newspaper, the top newspaper guys don't carry it, don't push it, it doesn't become a topic. If one small guy that has uh, 5,000 followers says Buhari is dead and put it on the, the it might not have that traction or credibility like when these big companies run that ad. So it might be a deliberate thing, like what has been happening to the Ebos over the years. There is a deliberate onslaught politically, economically, the media, everybody's just deciding to work against this group of people. But from the ashes, we will rise. We have risen from the ashes before. This time, the the rise itself, the rise itself, uh, it will be it will be it will be mysterious. It will be mysterious. So, if you like, call Arise TV and IPOB Media House. They have a credibility that most other media houses don't have. If you cannot hold the government accountable, you cannot explain the lies. And the, the if you can, that's why most people in Tunubu's government find it difficult to defend the policies of the government. They are not active. Buhari's media team was more active than Tinubu's media team. The only resort to lies, resort to uh, twisting, uh, manipulation, propaganda. When you look at the media team of President Bola Metrubu, you know that these guys, they find it difficult to defend the President Tunubu administration. With a Buhari media team, they were all on point. Garba Shewu and this other Yoruba guy, they were hitting it, hitting it, hitting it, hitting it. Now I see a Renault Mokri with the president, Bola Tunubu, a great manipulator. That guy can manipulate, can manipulate, can gaslight. I think it, he's an Ishekiri guy. And Ishekiri has some ties with the Yorubas. That, man, that, thing, uh, that guy is good. I give it to that guy at manipulating. He have been with the government for a very long time. See, that's how I, our leaders over the years have been man, manipulating us, gaslighting us, telling us that this, there's growth, there's to, to, to attract. Yes, we are going. We are on this one. We have increased. At the end of the day, we cannot fix anything in Nigeria. For the past 60 years, we could not fix anything in Nigeria. Nigeria is owing, owing unborn generations are owing, irrespective of the fact that these people have come out to gaslight us. So we, the government now needs people that can gaslight, that can manipulate wizards and witchcraft, people that have witchcraft spirit, sorcerers. These are the people that the government needs to push its agenda to gullible Nigerians. Look at the other day, they were showing bread. Such people were rushing. You, you, you should not be surprised that it, it, it didn't even start from Tinubu. It is a normal thing. Go on the street and wants to want, want to share one or two or three or four things. Bring out something you want to share. The kind the way people will rush you on the street, not even under Tinubu's regime. You know that the kind of people that are being led, the kind of people that these politicians govern, most of them are zombies. No matter what level they are, no matter what level they are, they are, these are politicians have hit jackpot. So, since they can come and lie to this kind of people, just bring one, the speech of the president, it took some very, very special persons to, to identify. People that really were in the financial sector to identify that this man was telling lies. If not, these people that were not even in the camp of the APC, the media would have not said anything. They would just look and be looking. And that becomes true. So in the next election, if they are campaigning, they will now put, yes, one publication by one newspaper. We attracted 30 billion in uh, foreign direct investment, which was a lie. But people were not able to debunk, to, to find out that it is a lie and debunk that lie. That is how it becomes our history. 
That is how it becomes what we think is true. But because there's somebody to debunk that truth, not even waiting for that light to even land, in the next one hour, they debunked it. And the eyes of people were opened. That's what I'm saying. We need more people to look at some of these things these guys are posting and debunk it directly. I trust a Harrison. What he's doing, he's doing a tremendous job. There are so many people that can do such a thing. There are so many people, you don't know. Some people do even believe that somebody like that, even this Yoruba Runus and conservative, what, what have you, they never believed that somebody like that, one man Mopo, could stand the heat. One man. What if somebody just dedicates his life into doing that? If an woman dedicates his life into doing such, you, 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 will, you will not be able to imagine the tremendous propaganda he can move. Whatever a woman decides to do and make up his mind, because I don't really see it as it is not part of us to just try and be pushing propaganda here and there. But some people, it is their nature. It is in their, in their culture. Propaganda. I'm not saying propaganda is lies. I study journalism. Propaganda is not always lies, but is a misrepresentation of reality. Misrepresentation. Explaining reality in a way that suits the person that is explaining it. So I'm not saying it's lies. It could be lie, it could be true, but representing it in a different manner. So there are some people that if you don't debunk their propaganda, it becomes true. Like I've been always, I've always been saying about the 1966 coup. Saying it's an ego coup. We have like six coup. Nobody said it was Yoruba or Alsa coup. But the one that concerned that a Delta man, in quote, that even the Renomok is from, carried out. They now said it was an Igbo coup and started hunting, hunting the Igbo people that led to the death of many people. Some people were asking, where are the graves? Where are the graves? Nobody is going to be foolish enough to show you the graves of those that died during the civil war. We are not foolish. We know your plans. We know it. We know it. So, Arise TV have been attacked by the mob. But we know, no matter how the lies fester for a long time, the truth will surely overtake it. No matter how lies stay, the truth will surely overtake it.